All right, natural reproduction. As I was saying, <coughs> when I was growing up in the fifth grade, they pulled us in this room on a, I went to Lankoff Elementary School. They took us to this, like, y'all gotta watch a video in the uh, auditorium. I'm like, I remember we're seeing them go from there. So you go in there and, and so you know most around fifth grade, you're like 10, nine years old, you know. And this is frowned upon now, of course, but it's okay to dress a little boy as a girl at six because they understand sex, but don't teach my kids about sex. Only I supposed to teach my kids about sex and I'm gonna train my little boy because I've been wanting a girl my whole life and I'm gonna convince this little boy that he's a girl. And uh, am I exposing y'all or something? <laughs> this little child went, mama, I wanna be a girl. That's what happened. Yeah, right. But anyway, as I was saying, we used to go in this amphitheater or the auditorium and they have a curtain there. They have a, a raggedy VHS TV with a VCR thing. VCR right there. And they'll put that video in there and they'll explain the birds and the beasts. And no parent gave a damn. They was happy the schools taught us that because they didn't have to do it now. <laughs> and that was great. Just like when you let your kids get spanked by other adults in the schools and then you'll go home because the kids can straighten up by then because they know if you tell them, they just, and then the, the, the kids, the parents, the uh, teachers used to spank your kids and then not even tell the parents. It's, that's, that wasn't being secretive about it. I'm trying to remember how many times my teachers spanked me and be like, Mrs. Beard, um, I had to beat the hell out of Houston Beard. In 600 you know, feet, just, turn they, left onto Government you got Street. To school, so you knew you was doing something wrong, so you went home like this, hoping the teacher didn't call. If the teacher called, your uh, parents would back the teacher and be like, come here, come here. I'll talk to you right quick, boy. I remember one time I was young, I was 12 years old. The, one of the dumbest things I ever done, I disrespected an elder. You understand? My turn left onto Government Street. I, I didn't do nothing wrong. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I was standing around a crowd that was acting up. I just happened to be right there, and the coach came by and just hit me on the ass, real hard with a with a paddle. You understand? I was like, I was mad as all know. Like I wasn't even doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was like, he said something to me. And I said, I'm gonna tell you what I said. I said, fuck you. He looked at me, he was like, what? I like, fuck you. <laughs> and I went into the uh, principal's office. I mean, I went into the, the coach's office. He was like, hey, you got two options. He said, uh, you can take this paddle right here from me. I'm like, man, I just told this man, fuck you. I was like, nope. Oh, I can call your mama. I thought for sure my mom was going to back me. Because I was doing nothing wrong. But uh, I was so wrong. I went home. She was like, what you, what you told that coach? Fuck you. Hmm. But mama. rat a tat tat that ass. I learned right then. He's grown. I'm younger. Take it. Leave it. I said, if I knew what, I, what was going to happen, I would have said, beat the hell out of me. But my mom probably whooped me worse than that coach did. The coach probably gave me like three licks. But you know, I learned right there, respect your elders, respect people that's older than you. You see, our parents didn't condone such foolishness. Even though I wasn't the one acting up. You know why I Continue on Government I Street for two miles. Adult. You watch videos on YouTube now? Teacher, teach better. I'm out of here. What? I wish I would have did something like that when I was young. And everybody, everybody jumps up and down. When, when the generation of the free, when teachers, when kids can speak what they want, but as soon as somebody say, you know, your hair is ugly, and they go kill themselves. Hmm. But you can disrespect the teacher, but you can't take 
nothing. Y'all some sorry, weak kids. You understand? You know why discipline has stopped? I'm ranting now. I'm sorry, but I'm not. I'm sorry, but I'm not, baby. I think that's what I'm going to call it. I'm sorry, but I'm not. You understand? The world's so bad now. Kids are shooting up schools. They're shooting up schools and the parents are so upset. Hmm. Allow the teachers to beat their ass again. they will think twice. I believe back in my day, kids, parents probably, teachers probably had guns in their purses, but nobody just knew about it because it was like, if this kid ever crossed me the wrong way, he's going to get pistol whipped. You understand? And then they're going to go home and be like, uh, Houston, what happened at school today? Well, I was, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I cussed the teacher out. What happened? She pulled a pistol out of person. She knocked me upside the head with it. Oh, it's okay then. I'm gonna knock you upside the head too. <laughs> For doing such and something as stupid as disrespecting an elder. You know, y'all think these teachers like teaching y'all bad asses? Y'all badass kids. You understand? You 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 so happy to send your kids to school? That is ridiculous. I'm glad I can't wait till school start back. Then school start back and your kids act up. Then you want to disrespect the teacher. Now you're teaching your kids to disrespect teachers and shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not, people. I really am not sorry at all about what the fuck I'm saying. You know, I may not talk like your regular, regular follower of Christ, but I am one. I'm going to talk how the hell I want to talk. You can get offended all day, but I guarantee you'll be like, he's saying some good shit. And the pastor probably then slipped up in front of his wife and said it too. He's saying some good. <laughs> you know, it starts in the homes, people. You know, but the thing is, no matter how you raise some kids, they're going to turn out to be like Cain. Because I'm sure, I bet you, Adam and Eve told. Cain and Abel of all the goodness of the Lord and how they was living in this paradise and they told me they got kicked out of paradise for not listening to God but when I guess he didn't he was the hard headed one of the bunch it was Cain you know and then God told Cain himself so I'm sure his parents told him enough then God come over to Cain hey man if, if you do well you'll be accepted man why are you mad at your brother? His gift, I just like this gift right now. You know what I'm saying? They say God don't have respect to persons, but a gift is a gift, and it's beautiful. I like, I like that. Work at it, man. Craft your art. You'll go stronger. You understand? You'll get better. But if not, sin lies at the door, so he'll be like, forget that, man. Am I my brother keeper? Caught his brother slipping and knocked him out. Caught his brother slipping and knocked him out, man. Killed him. Killed him dead. Jealousy, anger, hatred. And God warned them. God warns all of us. It's not a soul in this world that don't get warned before they do something stupid. I don't care if it's brother in a mental state. But you know, the thing is, after you did something stupid so long, it becomes the right thing to do. I'm going to go back to homosexuality. Well, I didn't, I didn't been doing this so long, it feels good to me. And I believe in God, but it just feels so good. I like this. Now the devil didn't like convince you that this is good because it's fun. And y'all got a group of the get along gang cheering you on. You understand? Well, little do you know, whether straight or gay, you're still gonna have marital. You're still gonna have. You're still gonna have relationship problems. Just want to break the ice to you. 
you know, for all of you that be like, I, I stopped dating men because men were dogs. You dated a woman, now that woman got five women and two men on the side. And you're both hetero, I mean, lesbian, what are you? You understand? And one of them keep popping up with children. How in the hell does that work? Like, oh, I know. It's just a lust. Because one of them having babies, another one ain't. So a man's coming in somewhere in the play. I know everybody in the world ain't got it, can't afford artificial insemination. You know what I'm saying? So they, they probably getting physically inseminated by a penis. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Boy, the devil's so sleek. You know? I, know, I met a whole family, right? Almost a, not a whole family, probably about 75% of them are homosexual or lesbian or however you want to say it. Uh, I'm like, wow. Oh, then I started remembering my Bible. I was visiting the iniquity upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. If you keep doing it, it's going to spread to your kids. Then he's going to break the chain. It spreads. Sin spreads. You know his daddy was a murderer. You know his mother was a whore. The daughter's a whore too. Uh, hmm. You know his daddy was a thief. He's a thief. What do you think God talks about when he talks about breaking chains? Hmm. You talking about physical chains? Spiritual chains. Because God has a chain of events. He got a chain reaction set up. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Michigan Avenue. Spreads. You understand? That's all why also he said, uh, Cain. Cain was like, man, this punishment you gave me is too harsh. Well, I don't condone murder. Whoever kills you, sevenfold. Whoever kills him, sevenfold. Now, the sins of murder is probably 3,000 million decibels fold right now. <laughs> Since the first murder. You understand? Murder, murder, murder. <sighs> it multiplies. I was watching a movie where one person would die and the other person would kill them. And Take the next left the person onto person. Michigan Actually, Avenue. This is what I was watching. I wasn't watching the movie. I was watching Naruto. I was watching Naruto Shippuden. I mean, Naruto, no, Boruto. It's a cartoon I watch all the time. It's an anime. And, uh, they always try to avenge someone and they'll kill somebody then it'll make somebody else anger grow and then they want a vengeance so they start killing somebody else in the family they kill vengeance and keep going and Baruto said I'm finna stop this kill me and sacrifice himself it's like this breaks this stops now am I hear anybody? Jesus Christ I'm tired of this constant murder murder kill kill Cheap, cheap. I'm finna, they can't do it right, so I'm finna take this upon myself, says God. And I'm gonna come in human form, and I'm gonna inform my son, Jesus Christ. And I'm gonna die for everybody's sins, because I'm about tired of this. And they can't get it right themselves, so I'm gonna send my son down there in my form. And we are one. He's oper actually me. He's Jesus. Uh, what? Yes, he's the same person, and I'm gonna die for you. Then I'm going to rise, raise myself up again. So that I can raise you up. And I want you to be better people than you are. I want you to start breaking these chains. Because I didn't get, because I had a rebirth, you know. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto Weinacker Avenue. You, you can re experience a rebirth too. Through the baptism and the blood and the water and the Holy Spirit. And all those generational curses and things that you think you were born this way. And it's been inherited to you. And I'm finna take it and I'm finna fix it. Take the second left onto Weinacker Avenue. Because you can't fix it yourself. You try to fix it yourself, it's not gonna work. You can't take that devil out of you. Only I can. Only I have power over those demonic spirits in the evil realm. So you gotta come to me. And you gotta love my father also now, which is God. You know, you can't say you love me and hate my dad. Continue on Weinacker Avenue for half a mile. You know. <laughs> now, in the earthly perspective, you can love some. 
You can love somebody. You can love your wife and hate their parents. But not really hate. You don't supposed to hate nobody without a cause. This, that's the, you're upset. You don't agree with them. You know, but it, it goes back to you leave your mother, your you leave your father's house, and you come to one with another. And a lot of y'all just keep y'all parents in the in the business, and then you want to be like, I'm gonna tell my dad on you. And then don't get mad. Then get mad at the man because you're like, fuck your daddy. <laughs> Don't be talking about my daddy like that. This is my house. Your daddy don't run this house. So, fuck your daddy. <laughs> or you can fuck your mama. Oh, I'm sorry. You see, a lot of y'all just, y'all cause this. Y'all turn whole relationships against each other because y'all talk too much. The mother probably wouldn't even hate or be upset with your boyfriend if you learn to keep your mouth shut when you have an argument. But every time somebody argue now, y'all ain't realizing y'all become one now. Yeah, every time you argue, hey mama, I went to the store and uh, he looked at another girl. I told you it wasn't no good. Then you go back, my mama said you no one good. Well, you fuck your mama. She ain't no good either. And then you get mad. Well, I know I'm supposed to reward evil for evil. But I'm trying to tell you to, to keep your mama. In 800 feet, mama. turn mama, left onto Midway Avenue. <laughs> I tell my, I'm sorry, but I'm not people. Stop running your mouth about your relationship to everybody. Because everybody don't give a damn about your relationship. God does. Especially your marriage. He cares. I want you to come to him. Stop going to everybody else. Outside sources. Because you may be going to the devil. And the devil like, <laughs> I've been waiting for you. I will bruise your heel. You will bruise my head. Take the next left onto Midway Avenue. You don't like the way I talk? So be it. But uh, these preachers been talking to y'all politically correct, and y'all still ain't listening to them. So I'm gonna take it down to y'all level. I'm gonna talk to you like you used to. And don't get mad at me for doing it. In 600 feet, your destination will be on the so left. You, all you so-called Christians got that one friend that cuss like a sailor, and you love to be around them. <laughs> he's funny. Because he's real. And you're... <laughs> it's okay, though, people. God loves you. Accept his word. Accept what he says. Do your best to do what he commands of you, and you'll be okay. But if you don't, sin lies at the door. But you have control over sin. Your destination is on the left. The more you rebel against God, the more God's going to allow you to rebel. He said, in the last days, I would let them, I would give them over to their pleasures and the imagination of their hearts. I would let them do what they please. And they like, well, God must have forgot about us. Well, the Bible says he's going to let you do it. And you idiots <laughs> don't know your Bible. So you like, well, God must be okay with it. Uh, he said, uh, in Revelation, he said, uh, those who are righteous, let them be righteous still. Those who are wicked, let them be wicked still. But I'm still coming. I'm going to let them do what they please. I'm going to let them exercise their free will. Some to destruction. Some to life. I'm not going to force you to do anything. I'm going to let you do what your heart imagines. It is written. Have a blessed damn day.